love running. I love running. The medical term for the big toe is the hallux. Um, when the hallux becomes limited, it no longer wants to bend upwards to an appropriate amount of, uh, of uh, flexion, dorsiflexion. Typically, we like to see 65 degrees uh, as a healthy example of enough motion for that person to be able to walk and run properly. Um, and the way that this starts is very early in life, um, before the joint becomes restricted, the little floating bones that sit under the first metatarsal, there's two of them, they're called sesamoids. They sit right in under here. Early on in most, most Americans' lives, as the tapering toe box of the shoe begins to push the toe over towards the second toe, those little floating bones, those little sesamoid bones, unfortunately go with the big toe. They have their own special grooves on the bottom of the first metatarsal. One of them is supposed to stay in this groove here. The other is supposed to stay in this groove here. Most of the time when we take an x-ray of a person's foot top to bottom, we, we begin to see how those sesamoids have shifted out of their grooves and will now be actually, the one that's supposed to be here will actually not be under the bone at all. It will be in what's called the inner space. And the one that's supposed to stay here, unfortunately rides up on top of this ridge of bone called the crista. The reason why that's significant and important is the crista has a larger diameter than the grooves do. So as soon as the big toe starts being deformed by footwear and pulling those sesamoids out of alignment, as soon as the uh, inner sesamoid gets up on top of this ridge of bone, as you can imagine, it will no longer be able to slide smoothly. And unfortunately, once it gets on the elevated ridge of bone, the big toe will not bend up as much. The problem then becomes the extensor hallucis longus to the top of the big toe tries to help get some of that dorsiflexion. The, the sesamoid on the bottom will not let it happen because it's on the elevated ridge of bone. So unfortunately, what we end up seeing is a growth of bone on the top of the metatarsal. And what's truly interesting about that growth of bone is if you look at an x-ray of a person with hallux limitus from the side, that growth of bone is projecting back towards their ankle. That's a very important finding. That growth of bone begins when the extensor hallucis longus pulls on the capsule of the big toe joint because it can no longer get proper motion. As that condition progresses, that person will end up losing some of their cartilage. A lot of times they will begin developing growth of bone on the inside and outside of the joint. And if nothing is done, that joint will then go on to become hallux rigidus, where it will fuse itself and it will not bend at all. So again, um, very critical that a person understands the natural mechanics of the big toe for hallux limitus, particularly the sesamoids. Preventive conservative care, again, cornerstone is always going to be footwear. Uh, the individual needs to understand that if they're not to have their sesamoids slide out of their grooves, their big toe needs to stay in line with their metatarsal. So that's step one. Step two, once we achieve that proper shoe, we will then use a correct toe silicone device to begin spacing the, the big toe away from the second toe. So as we use additional material here, we have confirmed with radiographic studies that the sesamoids will go where the big toe goes. So we could take this individual and we could send them to the hospital and get an x-ray of their foot, seeing that the sesamoids have shifted. We could simultaneously, directly thereafter, apply a straightening appliance to the great toe. And we would then be able to x-ray the foot and see that those sesamoid bones will go back where they belong, or at least they'll start shifting in that direction. So preventive conservative care is always about a proper natural shaped foot, footwear, I should say. Secondary step is correct toes toe appliance inside of that footwear. Third step is we, we want to try to keep that joint mobile and flexible. So we have a stretch called the toe extensor stretch that we do for hallux limitus to try to gain greater flexibility in the extensor hallucis longus and in the capsule. The same stretch that we do for a bunion is also helpful for hallux limitus. We try to get the adductor muscle out to length. And so we'll reapproximate the great toe and oftentimes we will begin uh, working on that adductor hallucis muscle to try to get it to lengthen out. In addition to 
tractioning of the great toe in a person with hallux limitus is oftentimes very helpful. And what you do there is you try to um, isolate the first metatarsal, which is this area here, while simultaneously pulling out on the great toe. Um, that applied frequently will loosen up the capsule, loosen up the joint, loosen up the adductor, and enable that person to approximate a better big toe position. We encourage the client to pursue all of their activities with the big toe joint bending on as close to normal angle as possible. Conventional, traditional hallux limitus therapy suggests that we should make an orthotic device for that individual to lift up under their subtalar joint and either put stiff materials under the first metatarsal called a Morton's extension to try not to allow the joint to bend or remove the materials under the joint called a reverse Morton's extension to try to get it to bend even more. Um, if those strategies are undertaken in a shoe that continues to taper the toes, um, it's bound to fail and at some point that person's arthritis will continue to develop to a point where they'll probably be offered a surgical correction where they'll get an incision across the top of the foot, the growth of bone will be removed, um, bone growth off the sides of the joint is removed oftentimes to try to achieve that 65 degrees of motion. Contraindications for hallux limitus or rigidus to use correct toes and approach it preventively or conservatively would be if by the time that individual presents for care, there is no mobility of the great toe. That would be a contraindication that person is more likely to benefit from a surgical correction. I love, love running. I love running. I love, love running. I love, love running. I love, love running.